Hey folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road. We made it through Vlogus. We're back, we're rested, and we're ready to go. If you're new to our channel, I'm Courtney, and there are two things you should know about me. I love goats, and this isn't water. Some of you may remember this medical cabinet find from a resale store when we took a trip there in Vlogus. And I said I was going to fill it with all of my goat medical supplies. And I did. Let's see what's in here. Well, actually, let's start with what's on the top. All right, so what is up here? We've got diatomaceous earth, which is good for killing certain kind of segmented body insects, which include uh, intestinal parasites. We've got disinfectant specially formulated for animals. This is something that I not only clean the barn with and clean feed and water dishes, particularly after a show, but also something we use to help prevent mastitis. Oh look, more stuff for bugs. This kind of stuff, I might dust in bedding or out in the pasture if we've got a particular issue. And this is just a good old little flea and fly spray. Sometimes the flies get really bad in the summer around here. We've got red cell. Red cell is primarily a supplement when an animal is anemic, but it does contain lots of other minerals and vitamins like selenium and copper. So just keep that in mind as you're dosing with it. Don't give it to sheep. And finally, we have the birth kit up here on top. I am gonna go through this later because that's gonna be a whole separate video. I could go down a rabbit hole on just what's in this box, for sure. Now there's just air in that cup. Here in the top shelf. So the top shelf supplies. This is where I keep all of my needles and syringes. I started buying my needles and syringes separately because I found that I was using the syringes a lot to dose medicine and having to take the needle off and dispose of it. So I decided to buy them separately so I can just put a lock lure style needle on there whenever I need to. I have both 20 and 22 gauge needles. So your 22 gauge needles will be good for most things, selenium, B complex injections, but some things are thicker, like the CD&T vaccine is a little thicker, and I like to use a 20 gauge needle for that makes it a little bit easier to give. If you're not familiar with needle gauges, they go the opposite of what you would logically think. Like number one, you would think is super tiny. Number 25 would be really big. It's the opposite way. Almost any time I'm giving one of my goats an injection, it's gonna be something that's under six cc's. So that's most of what I keep on hand. The majority of their vaccines are two cc's, three cc's. Same with medication dosages. However, I do keep some bigger syringes on hand, especially if I have a goat that I'm trying to give uh, ongoing care to, to kind of get their red blood cell count back up, or I'm treating urinary calculi or something like that. I'm gonna need to give a bigger volume. So keep some of those. Too. but I can't imagine I would need this for an injection. Let's hope not. Now for a little 50 pound goat. Two other things I keep here in the top. I have alcohol prep pads. Whenever I'm giving an injection, I like to clean the site and clean the top of the bottle just to help cut down on abscesses and all that kind of fun stuff. And then I have a sharps container so I can make sure to properly dispose of my sharps. Let's find out what's behind door number two. Oh, this is the good stuff. Not really. I'd like to not open this for the most part. All right, so here's something that you've got to get if you get a goat. Two goats, get at least two goats. If you get at least two goats, you also have to get a thermometer. If you're like me and you're always a little bit too much, you can also get thermometer covers and alcohol wipes because you know where you take a goat's temperature, right? Not in their mouth. Also, once you put this little cover on there, pro tip, spit is great lubricant. Next, we've got hoof care. Got a little brush and a little 
scrape dirt out of there. Hoof trimmers. I've seen people try to use garden shears for trimming goat hooves. I can't tell you what exactly the difference is, but it's definitely different. Like this definitely works better for trimming hooves. And of course we've got some blood stop powder for those times where, whoops, went a little too deep. It's happened to all of us. We've done it to our children and we've done it to our goats. It's okay. They'll live and they'll still like you. What they won't like is hoof rot. So here's some stuff I've never actually used. Well, I've used the test pads. These are little mastitis test strips. I have used them just to try it and see if it worked and practice because I didn't want to have to do it for the first time when somebody was actually sick. But fortunately we haven't dealt with that. It's just a matter of time though. And then I've got some Masto Blast. This is a homeopathic mastitis treatment. I wouldn't use that if a goat had full blown mastitis, but if it was kind of subclinical or, you know, it was late at night on the Sunday night and I didn't have access to buy what I needed or to the vet, you know, hey, at least it's something. Uh, and here's a bin that's not that much fun. Let's take it over here and look at it. This is my parasite and microorganism prevention and treatment area. So what do we have here? We've got Corid for coccidia. We've got Silence, which is a pour on for mites. Good old Valbazin, which is a good broad spectrum dewormer. Ivermectin. Prohibit, which is a pretty strong dewormer and is actually uh, in a soluble drench form here. I keep that on hand in case something else isn't working and also particularly in case of lungworms. Got cat dewormer in here too. We've got barn cats, so that's important. Dun, dun, dun. Some safeguard. One thing you didn't see in there but is coming is a bottle of Cydectin. Uh, Cydectin's pretty expensive. It cost me $76 for a bottle like yay big of the cattle pour on, but it is really what saved Carly and Meatloaf when we had a nasty parasite outbreak. So I want to have that on hand. Although it's $76, the expiration date is pretty far out and all I need is, you know, one goat to be that bad and it saved me the vet call. Good to have on your hand. And also sometimes your vet goes on vacation or gets sick or who knows what. So just worth some peace of mind for me. Sorry, Kenny. Yeah, it was $76. I might edit that out before you see this video. I don't know. All right, what else is here in drawer number two? On this side of drawer number two, we've got skin ailment treatments. We've got some bag balm. Probably about half of this has been actually used on udders and about half of it has been used on my hands. <laughs> we've got a good general purpose antimicrobial gel spray. You can actually use this on umbilical cords, cuts, scratches, all kinds of stuff and on a variety of animals. I wonder if I could spray this on the kids. I've got a big cotton roll. Not that I've ever had to use this, but just in case somebody gets cut or bitten or who knows what and I need to bandage them. Gauze scissors, gauze, blue Cody. Again, another great uh, germicidal and antifungal spray. I mean, this stuff is amazing, but it will stain you for weeks. And then some medical bandage tape. Vet wrap. Or vet wrap, depending how you want to pronounce it. Out of this drawer, if you're just starting with goats, like I said, you definitely need the thermometer. I also recommend a bottle of Valbazin. You should always get a fecal done if you suspect parasites, but that is a good thing to treat with if you don't have access to a vet or somebody so bad you need to treat them right away. A bottle of Blue Cody, super inexpensive, great to have on hand. On to drawer number three. Let's start here in the middle because this stuff is pretty simple. This is ammonium chloride. This is used to treat urinary calculi. If you have bucks or weathers, you should absolutely keep this on hand. Even if you have does, I have seen a doe get urinary calculi too. It's just not as common. These are not a necessity, but they're fun. These are goat treats, and actually these have ammonium chloride in them also, so it helps prevent urinary calculi.
Here we've got the bio sponge that I mentioned last night, or last month, not last night, last month, that basically saved Meatloaf's life. I've got B Complex Injectable. I've also got an oral supplement. Just really depends on the level of urgency with which I need to treat on which one I'm going to use. I've got tons of probiotics in here. Here's some boluses. They're actually boluses for cows, so I have to crush these up. But this is a water-soluble powder that you can put into their water. One thing I don't have in here right now, because I used it up at the fair and need to get more, is a packet of electrolyte powder. I like to keep those on hand. I've got Power Punch, which is a nutrient drench. Got another nutrient drench, and I've got a high calorie supplement here. This can be given to kids that aren't particularly strong, or even to help a goat recover that's lost a lot of weight. And this fun little thing is a teat dip cup. Remember that disinfectant I mentioned from up top and I said I use it to prevent mastitis? Well, after I milk a goat, I squeeze some of the disinfectant into this cup, dip the teat, and voila, we've got a goat that's not gonna get mastitis. All right, over here I've got some more stuff. We've got a multi-species vitamin gel. I don't necessarily know how to pronounce this. Replamin, 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 replamin gel. I don't know. Anyway, this stuff is amazing. I've been giving this to Carly and Meatloaf every day to help them gain weight. It's got basically everything in it. And people rave about how this helps their goats recover. I would have to agree. Down here, we've got copper galore. We've got various probiotic pastes and we've got a selenium and vitamin E. So what were the musts out of this drawer? So if you are not comfortable or don't want to give injections or you're just not there yet, the liquid B12. This is something a sick goat desperately needs. Ammonium chloride and probiotic gel. This is a great thing if you've got a goat with, wait, warning, gonna talk about gross stuff. You've got a goat with diarrhea or you've got a goat with bloat. So this is a little bit of a catch-all drawer at the moment. I've got some really big oral dosing syringes. These are, again, if I need to give a lot of something. Say I've got a goat that is upright but not eating or drinking well and I want to feed them this way. Here are my clippers. Obviously I need those for shows, but also when a goat's about to kid, you like to trim up the back of the goat and uh, make sure that the kids can find the teats well. In this drawer, there's probably nothing you absolutely need if you're new to goats. Maybe some gloves if you're gonna pick up a gross uh, poop sample, but really you could just turn a bag inside out for that. And we're down to the very bottom shelf. I'm gonna get a bucket to sit on because I don't think my knee is quite ready to kneel on concrete. Not there yet. So this drawer actually is no fun whatsoever. <laughs> this is all the stuff I hate but need. This is a cauterizing iron. This is what you use to disbud goats. So you plug it in, this gets super hot, and then you burn baby goats. It's brutal, and then you remember the time a goat got stuck in a fence, and you're like, oh yeah, that's worse. Hanging yourself is worse. Next, we've got a castrator. Put a rubber band, one of these little green doodads around here, and I've got my tattooer here, my green ink, because the black ink doesn't show up so well, and all my letters and numbers. I've got alcohol here too for when I go to tattoo and band. I wanna make sure all the germs are off of uh, what I'm working on. And then here I have bloat treatment and other items for a goat that is down completely, like on the ground, not moving. I keep the bloat treatment in here because that way if I need to grab it and run, uh, I can. So what's in here? This is the commercial bloat treatment. I think it's like uh, vegetable oil maybe, soybean oil base. I've also got some Thera bloat from the vet as well as some mineral oil. So I've got all the oil in here. Definitely if you're new to goats, you've gotta have some sort of oil like this that you can use for a bloat because it can get really bad really fast. I've got Formula 911, which is a electrolyte probiotic 
nutrient, sugar, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it kind of gives them everything at once. You can even mix this with uh, milk if you need to bottle or syringe feed a baby. And I have some 18 gauge needles in here. Again, kind of on an emergency basis, if you've got a really bad case of regular bloat, not frothy bloat, and you have to puncture the rumen to let the air out, uh, you can use a large gauge needle to do that. Done it once, I don't really wanna do it again. Um, I do have something in here that I've never had to use yet, and hopefully I don't, but just in case, I've got it. That is a stomach tube. These you can use with a stomach tube as well. Stick it on the end there. The idea with the stomach tube is if you've got a goat that is totally down and not eating or drinking, they can't swallow, right? This is how you would give them that. I actually have some stomach tubes up in the fridge because it's much easier to tube an animal or a person, I suppose, with a rigid tube. And in the heat, they're not particularly rigid. So I do keep a couple in the fridge in the summer. And I also have a stethoscope in here. Yep, your purr is working. Motor's running. Okay, so this isn't just so I can pretend I'm Doogie Hauser, which I do, but if I am gonna have to tube a goat, this would tell me if I am in the stomach or in the lungs before I start pumping that goat full of fluid. And also it's just, it's really cool, right? i just put this on and then I yell things and people listen. No, they don't, no one listens. Doesn't matter what I do. Right, kitty? Ooh. This cat thinks I'm smart and important. No doubt am I a little over the top on what I have for the goats. However, let's recap what you should absolutely get. What the necessities are if you have goats. First is bloat treatment and a way to give it. B12 and a way to give it. If you've got the oral stuff, give it orally. If you've got the injectable, give it with a shot. Probiotic paste. Blue Cody spray, antibacterial and antifungal. Covers all your gross skin issues. Valbazin and a thermometer. I hope that was helpful and informative. We will have new videos out Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays at 7 a.m. We'll see you then.